Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You're gonna be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. And today on the program, uh, it's minus a kablumpkin outside. It's minus... 32 outside. My car would not start. I had to put it on charge, plug it in. So I'm stuck here. So let's mess with Vega 64 a little bit. So I have a Vega 64 and I got it on a super cheap with a EK water block. And I also like to put various computer parts, uh, you know, under extreme overclocking pressure by putting them in a custom loop that hangs out of my th minus 32 window. So I've had not the greatest success with some CPU stuff lately, uh, but I know for a fact that this guy loves cold temperatures uh, and I have loaded the Vega uh, 64 liquid cooled BIOS onto this as well and it seems to be working. So that's a boost clock of 1700 and something, but we're gonna get it nice and cold and see how far we can take it uh, I'm not much good with, uh, you know, BIOS hacking and doing stuff like this. This is something I kind of learn as I go. Where's, I had a thing, there it is. So, um, you know, I, I might break the card, I might break myself, I don't know what I'm going to do today, but let's go ahead and get this guy switched over to this beautiful EK water block, and then we can begin some exterior testing at, yes, minus 32 today and see how far Vega 64 can, you know, blow up some, some records. It should be a fun time. It's actually running time spy. I've been doing a bit of uh, tweaking, modding, and such things and stuff. Uh, basically, with Vega, the power table is just uh, not good enough at all. Uh, once you have a stock cooler off of it, uh, or maybe even with board partner ones, but uh, basically, you edit the registry to increase the uh, you know the power slider. It only gives you an extra 50% power uh, initially, but you can actually edit the registry to give you 150% power. I also uh, swapped the BIOS on it for the Vega uh, liquid cooled BIOS. So we have uh, it doing some pretty good results here so far. So my initial, uh, you know, just everything stock and I'm running on a uh, i7 5820K, so a six core running at 4.8 gigahertz, nothing too special there. So we're not gonna be breaking any records with this today. I just don't like, you know, I, I have, uh, this here, the, the Threadripper, but I'm not, uh, anyways, y'all understand. So, uh, at best, you can kind of count on Vega out of the box hitting 600 or 1650 megahertz, uh, you know, there and abouts, and uh, it will go much higher than that. In fact, we are running at 1840 almost right now 1841 we're running really high clock speeds compared to what will happen and we're running time spot and uh, you see that gpu temperature up there one degrees one degrees we're running vega at m at uh zero at freezing point and uh we've got time spy running and it's just exploding so 
Uh, I don't know how far we can really go here. I'm, I'm hoping 1900 megahertz, but the scores increase exponentially once you get them uh, up and rolling. My graphics score started out at a 7, 75, 19, okay? And uh, I'm actually bordering on 8,000 right now. We're gonna do the CPU test real quick. Wish I had a bitter, a little bit better motherboard for this uh, X99 platform. Probably might be able to get this chip to five gigahertz. It's not like current gen Intel. The IPC on the uh, X99 platform isn't anywhere near what you'd hope uh, compared to uh, Skylake, KB Lake, and beyond. So, you know, I, I'm not gonna be getting the best uh, in scores here for CPU and for combined and stuff like that. But all I'm really concerned with is I want to uh, push the card as far as it'll go with these uh, ever, well, we're at 25, minus 25 out right now, so not doing too bad. So let's see where my score, I can't believe how flawlessly that ran. We just broke 8,000 graphic score in just time spy regular. That's uh, 8,051. That's extremely good for a Vega 64 and I have a feeling we can keep going as we see here we've got a zero uh, you know it's running at zero and it, if I don't make it do work you know uh, fairly regularly the fluid in the container will actually start to gel up a little bit so it's important that we keep going so uh, we just broke better than MSI afterburner uh, may, maybe we'll just we'll go baby steps but we'll put in 1860 I'm not messing with the voltage at all because I don't think it does anything good. Maybe we could bump it up to seven, I don't know. Let's go ahead and run another score and we'll just see where we end up. Can we keep pushing this baby? Can we keep pushing it? I don't know, but I'm pretty excited about that little guy over there running in the mirror in the window, running in the mirror, boof. One eternity later. Whoa! All right, so we're back, and uh, I've done all I can. I've maxed the thing out, and uh, 1850 megahertz uh, boosting up to that frequency is about as far as I could get it. I'll show you my settings in Wattman just so we can uh, whatever. Now, I tried uh, MSI Afterburner. I guess there's just a little bit better control, uh, finer control, even though I hate Wattman. I don't like that you have to have it so huge on the screen to really get all the information, but uh, not not doing too bad. So I could get uh, it boosting with, because uh, it actually goes a little further than uh, your max overclock set here especially if you start playing with voltages and, and the power limit is set to 150%, uh, it'll, it'll spike up. So I would set this to 1837 and uh, I would uh, maybe increase the, the, the voltage starts at 1200, just put it up to 1228, and I let um, a fire strike kind of run while I was just inching things up ever so slightly to get to this uh, point. So uh, 1837 yielded uh, a, a spikes up into 1850 megahertz on Vega, which is pretty freaking crazy. And I'll show you uh, the power consumption that was coming out of the wall with this system uh, in a second as well. So we get that power limit slider all the way to 150%, and I uh, had to do a registry edit in order to unlock this 150%. There's, uh, Build Zoid has a really good, I'll put it in the doobly-doo how you unlock that. Uh, if you want to go further than just the 50% it allows and then my memory I could do 1060 uh, And it didn't really seem like to matter whether I changed the voltages or not so pretty pretty cool stuff on this uh, Vega 64 once I got the water block on it And I don't see that my results were all that much better than if I just had it in a you know fairly well cooled system uh, you know with the water block on it so I think I will eventually do that it definitely it really benefits like if you know Vega at all it hovers between 1600 and 1700 of Vega 64 uh, on the the core clock uh, and as you play more games and that cooler just gets bogged down uh, it starts dipping into the 15s and, and below and you really have to play with it to get it to actually stay at its advertised boost speeds of like, I think the uh, regular air-cooled version gets supposed to go to like 1680 or something like that. The water-cooled version is supposed to get about 100 megahertz more than that. But until you unlock that power limit, you'll rarely see those speeds. But we started off with the liquid-cooled BIOS 
uh, at stock getting 7,646 with a graphic score of 7,733. And I was able to bump that up by more than 400 points there, I think. Uh, yeah, just a little bit, no, a little under three, 400 points to 8,124 in Time Spy. That's just regular Time Spy. Uh, so I get a good, you know, over already, uh, you know, this thing running liquid with the liquid cooled BIOS on it. We got pretty significant jump in performance as far as I'm concerned. And then uh, in regular old Fire Strike, we started out, uh, actually, this is just the stock. Uh, score on my Threadripper, getting a 24,531, and we were uh, we got about a thousand more points, uh, 25,493, uh, when it all was said and done with uh, the the overclock. So I'm overall pretty impressed with, you know, if they would have put really good cooling solutions, like hopefully the Vega Seven, you know, the three fan cooler, would have triaxial cooler. Uh, is going to be able to tame that beast because it's definitely going to suck the power the same as this Vega does. But had they come out with that cooler on regular old Vega, I think it would have had a lot better reputation. It is completely... Uh, you know, worsened by that cooler and the board partner versions are so expensive and they were so hard to come by for such a long time that it makes sense that Vega has such a stigma on it. But I think if you want to put a, like get a real water cooling system going on and, uh, you know, put, put some cooling to this thing, it's a pretty damn decent GPU and it's a lot of fun to mess around with. All that would happen is Fire Strike would crash uh, I never had to where the system you know, wouldn't recover from a high overclock crash, which is really nice. A lot of times you just you have to restart the computer every time it crashes. That's really annoying. And it will let you run it at sub-zero temperatures, which is very, 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 very cool. So I'm on Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. This has been my ultra mega super overclock on the Vega 64 using liquid cooling and the outside temperatures of, uh, what are we at? Minus 21 still. Jesus, it's still minus 20. Uh, running that, you know, as cold as possible. I was actually able to max my little system out here, which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, these results would have been made even better had I had a better platform to run it on. But uh, we will be looking at my X99 uh, system coming up soon. So keep an eye on that. It's a six core X99, uh, you know, and it was actually pretty damn cheap. So I'm going to be doing a little review on that very, very soon. But I'm out watching you join Instagram and Twitter. Remember, I have a Patreon. And all this wicked hardware I buy for the, you know, for you guys to come into my channel and watch me overclock the crap out of things, uh, every little bit on Patreon helps. So if you can donate a dollar or two a month, uh, you get access to, uh, you know, some behind-the-scenes pictures and videos and stories. And, uh, you know, it helps Timmy Joe's channel out. As well, if you have any crazy hardware you want to check out with Timmy Joe and you maybe you want to donate to the channel, uh, me at Timmy Joe com that you can give me an email but uh, that's it for Vega overclocking today and absolutely uh, a load of fun for me but it wasn't really that you know entertaining of a video I don't think pretty cool though to see Vega running at 1850 megahertz oh man I just hope that Vega 7 has those kinds of clock speeds and then we'll really be cooking with gas I'll see you guys in another video thank you very much Have a good day.